Now, over in Mongolia, polls there have closed in yesterday's presidential elections, but still no results available. The focus for Mongolians has been corruption and also fair or fairer distribution of wealth from mining revenue in the country's vast uh, resources. The revival of growth, which has slipped from a 17 percent peak in 2011, is also something the new leader is going to have to deal with. For more, let's talk to John Lee, executive chairman and also president of Prophecy Coal, a thermal coal mining and production company with operations in Mongolia. John, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Good to be back. Thanks for your time today. So uh, talk to us with these presidential polls. I mean, you're, uh, you're, you're doing business there. Yes. Okay. What kind of outcome would be positive for you? Uh, maintaining the status quo most li mostly. Yeah. Yes. Things are going fairly well. As you mentioned, James, there's been a slowdown in the economy across the board, including Mongolia. And uh, visibly, the citizens are concerned. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, uh, this election, uh, I think it's probably not as important as the election take pl that has taken place last year where the parliament is elected. And um, the, uh, I think the politicians most likely will try to maintain the status quo and, and keep moving the econ economy forward. It's possible going over very well with investors. In 2012, FDI in, Mo FDI in Mongolia, it dropped 17%. I mean, does the government have true credibility with you when they make you a promise as a business leader? Do you feel like they're going to follow through? Yes, Lisa. Uh, from the year, everything, if you put in everything into proper perspective, 2008 to 2012, Mongolia is seeing tremendous growth. It's the fastest growing economy in, in Asia, where the economy grew in 2011 over, over 20% and 2012 over 17%. So therefore, it's created a, a, a great wealth gap, which the politicians need to address. Uh, even though there's been a slowdown in the economy and slowdown in the FDI, still the, the economy managed to grow in double digit, and s there's still inflow of, of FDI. It's just, in relative terms, it's slowed down. John, here's the thing, though. Uh, we need to see more clarity in terms of, A, the mining law, and B, investment policy as well, for companies like yourselves to forward plan and to do business in the future. Is policy moving in the direct, right direction in terms of the investment climate. Yes. This government has actually demonstrated a fairly moderate stance toward foreign investment. The, um, keep in mind that Mongolia is a democratic country, so therefore the politicians have to balance the need of foreign investment to public sentiment. And I think it's doing a, a fairly good job. There hasn't been any dramatic uh, uh, policies or laws that prohibits foreign investment, right. but it's just been some uncertainties because of the elections coming. Uh, and hopefully once the election is, uh, is out of the way, so business will go on as usual. Are you happy with the way revenue sharing agreements are uh, organized in Mongolia right now? as it applies to prophecy. Yes. The laws are fairly well established. There is a stability agreement and the, the mining law is, is, is offer fairly good clarity. It's just implementation and the speed at which the government goes on approving these stability agreements for companies that apply is being delayed because of the, because of the election. It's so difficult for Rio Tinto with their, with their mine, the OU Tolgoi mine. It's such a big project for them. They really need to diversify uh, their revenue stream, yes. and it's been like pulling teeth trying to get that stuff out of the country. I mean, how much damage has that done to Mongolia's reputation? Oh, very much. I, I think the damage is obviously visible, and Lisa, at the same time, once in production, Oyo Togoi, the project controlled by Rio Tinto, would account for 30 percent of the GDP. So therefore, the government really want to really want to sort of examine all the policies and, and rules in place before giving the go-ahead on, um, on, on production. And I think that's, that's fairly understandable too, Lisa. But I, I'm sure, I think once the, the election is out of the way, $6 billion are being invested, it would account for 30% of the country's GDP. It's in everybody's interest yeah. to make sure that the project advances mm. forward. Just very quickly, John, yes. the China slowdown, is that being felt in Mongolia? Very much so. Mongolia once in 2012 was uh, the largest uh, exporter of coal into China and now um, the coal price has dropped and the production has slowed down and uh, you're, you're seeing the weakness of the Mongolian currency as a, as a result. Um, and I think China's slowdown um, by large extent has fell all over the, all over the world. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. That was John Lee, Executive Chairman and President of Prophecy Coal, telling us about doing business in Mongolia.